right. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of What Say You. We're back. It's been a while in, in their eyes, right? In our listeners' yes. eyes. Because uh, if you weren't at the two London shows, then we've been gone for two weeks. Yeah, because last week was JV, and the week before we missed one because it was we missed one, right? Because we were in London. Yeah, right, something like that. No, the week before London we missed one because we were oh the crazy show was, busy. Right, 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 right. Okay, great. Well, look, we're here. We're back. Um, how do you feel? Good. Yeah. You know what else besides the two London shows, which were just to say they were a blast. Oh, they were so much fun. I mean, just the actual shows themselves, like the guests we had, the audience. The topics that came up, we went in there with no agenda. Right, right. And I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but like they were two. The first show that we did two hour and 40 minute each. Yes. Shows. Hour and 40 each. Right. It was uh, a lot of fun. I mean, unexpected, crazy things happened. Sure. Uh, it was just, it was just really, really good. And the audience was awesome. Right. Uh, and we were just talking about this. We are thinking about. Yeah, we may be releasing those as a double vinyl. Dude, I would love that. It's amazing, right? I would love that because I I haven't done that. You've done it already, yeah. but I haven't. I would love to do it. I'd love to put the time in it because it's like it'll be like timeless for us, you know? Yeah. Especially with all the different artwork. We'll do it. We'll do it. We're going to yeah. do it. We're going to do it. We'll, yeah. we'll do it. I want to design like the, the front and the back. And yeah, the yeah. You know? we gotta That'll get, be fun. Get people involved. We'll have a contest. I'm going to get uh, on that sooner rather than later. Because it's not a lot of work, especially since we're going through merch table. Yeah. Um, which, by the way, the t-shirts have started going out. Yeah. Uh, people have started showing up at the Tenderloin shows uh, with What Say You shirts. Yeah. Much to the chagrin of James James Murray. <laughs> <laughs> he's hating it. He, he doesn't. He He's come around a little bit now where he's, where he's turned it into a joke. But he says we're splitting the brand. Uh it's it's in, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. He, no, no. But he took he took a shot at me when I wasn't there. He did. He, he said did. to you, "Way to go doing a podcast with Sal." But mm-hmm. I mean, you could have did one, and I would be someone who would actually do some work, right, and right. bring something to the table, right, right. which is hysterical <laughs> because you know there's, there's there's not all that much that we do. We meet up, we talk. You send it over to Declan. Right. We have little tasks that we take on here and there. Sure. But, but I mean, like you know, we organized we we've organized <laughs> a live show in Europe. You, right. We we organized uh we organized a, right. a trip with Gallagher. That's right. Um, we're gonna work on this vinyl. We got shirts, you know, or whatever, whatever it is. But there's not too much work to go into it. But then the flip side of that is, then he has to, you have to do a podcast with him, right? <laughs> <laughs> he has to, and then he has to entertain. Right, he has to entertain everybody and be funny. I I love how, and I, I want to talk to him about um the villainous role he's taken on this podcast. <laughs> like I want him to embrace that and and to run with it if possible. Right, like he's not going to come here and just start a stream of conscious talk about all different things and click with you like we do. He's going to sit down literally and talk about himself. Right. That's right. About but about bullshit. <laughs> Which like can he get Rosario Dawson? Uh like uh those like the like uh oh, I want to challenge Joey Fatone. Uh, right, right. Like it's just like eh. It's just <laughs> it's just nothing. It's nothing anybody cares about. Like the uh, one, like I didn't hear it, but I was told that the the last podcast the telling us that they did was just an hour of Murray talking about himself. Oh well. It's good, but you know what? On the Ten Lines podcast, we found a way to revamp that. That's going to be coming back. Soon. Yeah, that's gonna. That's exciting. I I, I want to do it. Like, right. I don't understand. Like I don't even think we should, ever should have stopped doing it. Right. I think honestly, whoever can do it that week, even if it's Bill Burr style, like even if it's one person, right? Just do it. Show must go on. Right. That's the key. That's the key. Consistency. Yeah. Listeners want. They, if they start to like it, then they come to expect it. That's right. And we fill a role for them. Right. And that's our role. And, and, uh, you know, so I, I mean, I, I love doing the Tenderloins one too. It's a completely different dynamic. I would love if we can do the Tenderloins one and the dynamic was such that we have. Right. We were literally shooting the shit and talking about things. But what happens is like we have this tendency to like, cause we've performed together for so long to always be building on something. Yeah. yeah. And it's a little sticky and it's a little like, it's, a, it's like we're always looking for a, the joke. Right. As opposed to just chilling. Just bullshitting. That is what I love the most about. Like you said at the top of the show, the London shows we had no agenda. Right, I love that. I love that so much, man. That's that to me is like. The I best. mean, we were we uh we, right before the first show, we ran across the, we ran down the block to get a slice of pizza, which was just gross. 
And because right. I, I heard that, that we were in like the West End Soho, we were in uh, Leicester Square, yeah, the Prince yeah, Charles yeah. Cinema, with the, which which if we could take two seconds to say how great they were, awesome. Like, Unbelievable. And I got a real nice email from them yeah. saying how much fun they had. Oh, that's great. They, 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 the crew came out, like the, the tech yeah. guys all came out drinking with us afterwards. People were buying them drinks just because they worked there. They, they were like talking to people. It was, it was great. Declan. Declan killed it. I mean, a celebrity, a celebrity in his own right, man. Yeah. People nervous to ask him for pictures. People yeah. asking me if it's cool to ask Declan for pictures. <laughs> it was, it was really special, man. It was to me, it was, it was very special. Place was the perfect setup. Yes, room was great. Staff was great. Everything went without a hitch. Yeah, uh, they made it happen. Declan made that happen. Right, and uh, we had a, f- I mean, a blast. Yeah, and right before we ran down the block. Uh, we said hello to everyone online. Yeah. Went to grab a slice of pizza, which th- what I was getting to was it was gross because we were in like the Times Square of. Right, right. You know, like, the, but because I was later told that they do have good pizza. Mm. Uh, and we did then. Did shots, quick shots. Did a couple of shots, shots and then ran back on stage and we were standing in the stairwell waiting to walk out and yeah. we were just like, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> and it was five seconds before we were going on stage. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. And there wasn't a there wasn't a second there wasn't a second that it dragged or no, dulled. No. We had great guests. We had uh we had Marek from the British uh, BBC Three version of Impractical Jokers, mm-hmm. who who killed it. He killed it. He, he was okay. such a great guest. Ian uh, Moore created uh, Morris creator of the Inbetweeners uh, stole I think the second show from us. Yeah, yeah this one. What uh, with that moment where he, yeah. he purposely derailed the show. Yeah. Um, and he went so long that it came back around. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Too awesome. Oh, we set him up, right? I mean, yeah. he, he took it and went ran with it. He ran with it. He ran with it. He did great. Uh, um, so that being said, overall was a very successful trip. Yep. Thank you also to uh, James Buckley, right? We went to see a Oh, my God. Match. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, James is in the in-betweeners and a great guy. Yes. And he took the afternoon off and got us some some tickets. And we saw I saw my first soccer match. It's right. good to match. Yep. West Ham, West Ham United versus Crystal Palace. Yeah, um, and Crystal Palace won. Crystal Palace won. Yeah, one nothing. Yeah, one nothing. Yeah. It was an exciting game too. They won on a penalty kick, right? Yeah, yeah. Game. Not a, after a contested penalty yeah. kick. Yeah, it was great. Uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. What a, what a what a great guy he is, and and it was just it was great, and it was it was so fun um, watching Marek get assaulted for being on a Practical Jokers and being asked to take photos. I loved it. I yeah. loved it so much. Yeah. People were like, oh, mate, you're practical jokers, right? And we were like, well, and then they went right to Marek and we, they were like, they were holding out our cameras to us and we just took pictures. It was, it was great. It was great. Yeah. So that's, I mean, just, I don't want to not give him any London, you know, but that sure. was that we, we saw Book of Mormon. We saw Book of Mormon, right? And, and we, and we saw another play. Let the right we, one in. We, yeah. We, we saw Let the Right One In, which was a, a movie that they, you know, I don't know. Yeah. If, I think it was a movie first. I don't think it was ever a play. Oh, no, it was a movie first. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, we did a lot. We did not have – we slept late every day. We yeah. never quite got on London time. No. So we and sl- every day we said the next day we get up early, we just didn't. We never did. But from the moment we woke up to the moment we went to sleep, uh, packed. There wasn't an empty yeah. moment in the day. We went to the Utter, Utter Belly Festival, right. which is a big comedy festival in London – that uh, runs for like uh, I think April through July. Yeah, and it was so cool, man! It's on the water, and there's all different like food trucks and stands and right. an outdoor space, and then there's this big inflatable purple cow that's essentially a comedy tent. Right. Uh, and we saw Tony Law. Yeah, who I ne- who I never heard of before this. Right. I think the fridge is on. I thought I unplugged it. No, that's that's a fr- the fridge is on. What the hell did I unplug? You unplugged the microwave. Um, right. Tony Law, who I had never heard of before. Um, what'd you think? Oh, I thought I loved it. Really? I thought right? It was great. Yeah, yeah. He was cracking me up. It was so much fun. He didn't really tell jokes. Like it was weird. Like he, yeah, he did. It wasn't it was like, more of a, it was more like of a performance. It, that's it. He, he told, he started telling a story. And I, and if you're listening to this and you love comedy, I really recommend, he's got to have something on YouTube or something. Oh right? yeah, I'm sure. Um, I mean, just to give you an example, he started telling a story about how he didn't want to go to a dinner with his wife. Then he went to the dinner with his wife, and then he clogged the toilet, which is all material you've heard before. But then somehow it ends up with him in outer space with a bear 
<laughs> and his wife riding a sausage dog to come rescue him um, and him getting cell phone reception in space. It was, it was, it was something to see. And then we met him afterwards and he would, he couldn't be nicer. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, thanks yeah. to Ian for those two. Yes. And he got us those. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, so we did that. We got to see two weeks early Spider-Man 2 in IMAX 3D. We went to the biggest screen in England. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we went to a midnight show. Right, right. I mean, we, we were essentially the, like the first people to see it. And it was, I mean, it was IMAX in 3D, which yeah. I don't really normally like 3D. But the scenes, the Spider-Man two scenes, right? And I, I'm, I imagine they're unbelievable without the three D. Sure, the, the fight scene. Anytime he was Spider-Man was great. It was, but it was jaw dropping. Yeah, like the, especially like the first half, like right. when he's just flying through. Like I almost like the the first half of the action better than the ending action. Although I like the ending action too. Right. But it was like when he's flying through Manhattan. It's something you've never seen before. It's it's unbelievable. Right. It's yeah. on the, the the vision of that, and then to ha- be able to accomplish it was unbelievable. Right. Now, <laughs> when he was not Spider Man, which was the vast majority of the movie, seventy five, seventy percent, seventy percent, easily. When he was not Spider Man, of the seventy percent of the time that he was not Spider Man, right, he cried, right, for eighty percent. Yes, he was crying, about to burst into tears. Well, had just stopped crying. <laughs> and that's not an exaggeration. If the right. movie is two hours, let's just say. Yeah. He cried for one hour. Right. Which is crazy. It's a lot. I, I turned to you as a point at a certain point and made a joke. I'd be like, there's going to be Spider-Man in, in the Spider-Man movie, right? And then a half hour later, Spider-Man still hadn't been in the movie. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like. For me, it was it was too extreme. So he was either making quips Mm-hmm. Even as Peter Parker, right? He was either making quips like he he's the coolest guy in the world, right? Or he was crying because he was the most depressed, sad person in the world, right? And the the, the the crying didn't show me a vulnerability. It showed a vulnerability, but it didn't show me the nerdy Peter Parker. I mean, I guess we're past like an origin story, but like he missed the in between Peter Parker for me, right? If that makes any sense, that to makes you. sense to me. Well, like, yeah. Peter Parker's a little nerdy, you know. Yeah. He's a little geeky, but not sh- geek chic like he plays him. Like I don't know. Like I, you know, there was a, there was something in the Tobey Maguire, or something in the comic book one where it's like, yeah, he's Peter Parker right now, but he's a little nerdy and he's still a little like unsure of himself, right? A little not confident, especially when it comes to like even even his relationship, right? But he was so just like. The coolest guy. Yeah. <laughs> or crying. <laughs> so, like. And, well, did you, if you. And I love the first one. Yeah, we had a, we had a blast with the and, first and one. And Garfield's performance in the first one. Yeah. It's not that his performance was bad. It's just that, like. Oh, I think he's great. I yeah, think he's, he's a great. Good. Spider-Man, I think he's a great Peter Parker. And she was phenomenal. Emma, yeah. Emma Stone was great. She was awesome. And, I, and we're going to spoil the end right now. So, if you haven't seen it yet, this is your warning. Stop listening. It just came out, right? Should we. Sp- well, we're telling them. Yeah. Jump ahead. Jump ahead. Okay. What'd you think? You didn't know she was going to die, right? No. No. Yeah. I didn't know. And I was like, it was a real fucking depressing. It was fucking not- And they did it so well. Like when her head hits the floor, yeah. it's, it was so gruesome to watch. I was like, ooh. Well, I didn't know. And I'm like, I was like so removed with all the crying at that point <laughs> that I turned to you and I'm like- like there's like like she's actually dead. I right. said that because I didn't know. Yeah. And she was. I was like, oh fuck, she's dead. <laughs> she's dead. Yeah. He he already spent the movie tortured by like fa- like sad that he didn't know if his father loved him or left him or why or whatever right. it was. He cried about his aunt. Mm-hmm. He cried about their relationship in general and having to break up. Mm-hmm. That was all you know. That he might have even been through some toil about his friend. Who was dying. Well, he didn't know. He didn't want to give him the blood and his friend was dying. So he cried a little bit about about that. that. Yeah. yeah. But then, so he already cried for 10 reasons. And then at the end, she dies. Yeah. Like he watches her die. (laughs) Like he he couldn't save her. He watches himself fail saving her and watches her die. Right. And now you're like, all right, 
Now he should be crying. <laughs> like, now I get it. Right, right, right. And I thought that that scene at, the, at her grave with the change of seasons was really well done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the movie overall, I don't, I don't think I would ever watch it again. I would because I got to see those action sequences again. I yeah. got to. I got to. Plus, I have a site online that streams in Blu ray for nothing. Really? Wait till I tell you about this. Do you want to admit that on the air that you're, you're illegally? No, I didn't say, I, I didn't say it was illegal. Well, streams for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say it was illegal. All right, that's there you go. So there's a free, there's a legal site out there that streams Hollywood movies for nothing. Could be. <laughs> I didn't say anything like it was illegal. <laughs> I'm not downloading anything. Right, you're streaming. Hey, I went onto this website and it started playing. Right. Like I didn't. I didn't. You're not a lawyer. You can't. Get I'm it not some, sharing it, and sure. I'm not keeping it. Right. So you tell me. Right. When a, when a ra- when a song comes on the radio, is that illegal? No, it's there not. You know, well, same they- exact thing. <laughs> same exact specific thing. Um. <laughs> so so London was great. <laughs> yeah, I did learn something in the London show. Um. We I think complained too much about being on TV. Did we? Were you, were you into, I think you, we did because I asked the audience that in the live show, and they were like, "Yeah, <laughs> like everybody oh, started going." Oh yeah, you said that. Right? Yeah, I go. I, oh, oh, they, oh, oh, right. You didn't mean you don't mean during the London show. No, no. You mean on the podcast? On the podcast. Yeah, because I said that, and the people were like, "Yeah." So I don't know if that I don't. But do we complain so much as share our experience? I thought it was sharing, but I guess that it could be construed as complaining, which I thought we went out of the way not to do. But I guess it trickles through. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard that feedback prior. I wonder. Maybe about it's it. like the London audience is like like they they view things like they have a lot less tolerance for right. whiny bitches. Because <laughs> America <laughs> loves a whiny bitch, right? Right. <laughs> like Spider, we're the Spider Man's of the podcasting world. So yesterday I tweeted something and I was like, um, "Dude, I I cracked my foot last night." Oh, so funny, dude. Your, your tweet was so funny. <laughs> I cracked my foot, dude, right? I was – the phone rang and I was running to get the phone. Right. I hit my foot on that bed. And, you know, I've hit, I've hit my foot before. And you're like, oh, fuck. You're like, you like either sprained it, black and blued it, bone bruise, or you just cracked it. And you have to rub it. You don't know if something's broken. But I hit it so hard, right, mm. that I was like, ah. And I like fell down. I like stumbled, fell down up to the tile area. And then I <laughs> got up and I looked down. It was gushing blood. Yeah. Like there was already a trail of blood. Like it was, oh. and I look and it ripped the nail off. Oh, yeah, H- half of the nail's gone, oh. and it was like oh. there, there was literally a stream of blood on the floor. And I was like, oh, I and wish then you I, had told me that. I picked the phone up and I was like, and I was writhing. I was like, ah, ah! and they were like, oh my god, what's the matter? And I couldn't get the words oh. out to be like, I was saying it, but it was inaudible. And I was like, I am my I cry, my foot is bleeding. <laughs> they were like, what is the and I was just like, I couldn't. And then I just laid on the floor. Did you ever see that internet video? Uh, takes a tumble. What's her name? Takes a tumble. No. Yeah, I showed it to you. It's a big, heavy black lady, right? And she's singing to her to her webcam, and she's like singing R and B, and she gets up on a, her coffee table, uh, and oh, it yeah, shoots yeah. out from under yeah. her. And when, before she hits the floor, she hits the table. Yeah, I think it's like Trudy or someone takes a tumble. Yeah, yeah, I, see, I remember. And then since she's recording it from her thing. No one shuts the camera, and she's laying on the floor, rolling, going, oh, oh, right? And she's just rolling. And that's the funniest part. And she's just like, oh, she can't make, she can't make sounds. It's like that woman with the grapes. Yeah, the, exactly. Oh, 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 turn it off. Turn it off. Oh, 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 oh. She can't make words. She can't yeah. form words. That's exactly how I was. <laughs> like the, my phone was on speaker because I just like threw it back down. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> so, so I wrote, I wrote on Twitter. Like I just wrote like, like after I got the bleeding down, I was laying in bed. And I just, I took Advil and I like bandaged it up. Right. And I just wrote, just, and I wrote, like I wrote crack foot dot, 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 side bed dot, 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 blood gushing dot, dot, dot. Won't be long now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wrote. Meaning, I'm going to die. Right. It's a joke. Like, sure. won't be long now is like so over the top dramatic exactly. on purpose. Right. 
So many people will literally want the reason I that jogged my memory just now was because someone said, Oh, stop being a whiny little bitch. <laughs> it's like, first of all, there wasn't a whine in there. It was just factual. Right. I said cracked foot on bed, blood gushing. Not there's not a complaint or a whine in there. Sure. It's factual. Right. It won't be long now. Says I'm not keep I'm not taking it serious. Right. I'm making a joke. Like, why is this person coming at me like that? You're you're a target, man. You're you're put yourself out there like all all creative artists. You tried to make a joke and somebody shot you down. People are like, uh, oh, you come on, you're so dramatic. And then other people will like get to the hospital. Like <laughs> that's like one thing that's really fun about Facebook and Twitter for us is it's a law of averages. Right, right. you're gonna get there's gonna be something for everybody, <laughs> and f- there's going to be a percentage of people that it goes over their head, which right. is humorous. They don't get it. They react the wrong way, and it's just those are the things I love, right? Like that you throw out there, and you get back like just people just don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had one. Uh, and you're you're. Uh, I can't imagine anybody listening to this doesn't know, but you're at Sal Volcano, right? Right. At the, the you know. So. Uh, I had one. Another thing, someone completely took the wrong way. Let me say, it was like two days ago. I wrote. Uh, Oh, I, I wrote, I want to jump out of my car and strangle these people that have road, road rage. Yes, I saw that. Half the answers were like, I fucking know. Fuck these motherfuckers. Like, I want to kill them. Like, they didn't even get the, the, right. the, the and the other half was like, you, you have to be bigger. You have to be a bigger. <laughs> Wait, we were on the phone the other day with, um, like, what was your reaction to me screaming at that woman in the car on the phone? The dude in the car it wasn't even a woman. When I got cut off, oh, on, we we're on a business call. Yeah, we were on a business, <laughs> we were on a business call. What did I say? With, well, I said I was like, we were on a business call with our manager, uh, our touring agent, and it was it rained in New York City more in one day than a two month average. Right. It was sheets of rain. Right. And I was driving, and I had the Bluetooth on, so it was coming out my car speakers. And a woman cut me off. A uh, dude cut me off. Um, and he. I'm not being dramatic. He almost he almost drove me off the road. He right. he just he didn't even, he he just slammed into the right lane, right. and I had to go into the onto the divider of which it was a cement wall. So I just go watch what you're doing, you fat fucking cunt! Yeah, I scream yeah. in the middle of a business call, <laughs> and like but everybody just got silent. I forgot what I, did I say something? Did I cracked uh, a joke. Joe, Joe did. Joe goes, uh, well, Quinn's on the road, clearly, or something like that. Uh, but afterwards, I, I put it on mute afterwards because I was shaking. I was uh, like, when something like that happens, you you know what I mean? Uh, like yeah. you're just like, yeah, when you're we're almost to the point where you're expecting the accident. Yeah, and I felt I I don't know why, but I felt really embarrassed and foolish for the rest of the call. I I did. Really? Yeah, I did. I went off everyone's shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I screamed it so loud. Yeah, I was like, that was really loud, really, yeah. really passionate yeah. and out of nowhere. <laughs> and it was like, I'm surprised he did that. But I guess it was born out of the fact that you had no choice. Dude, I, I didn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a conscious thought. Yeah. It was just a reaction to the fact that I thought I was about to get into a serious accident. <laughs> right. And the guy driving the car was a fat cunt. <laughs> he didn't hear me anyway. It's right. pouring rain. He's he's driving right, off. Right, right. But oh my god, was I fucking was I nervous about that? And then I felt really bad. I was like, I look stupid, which is I shouldn't to our agent. Yeah, it, it was it, believe me, not not another person but, don't yeah, thought of a second about it. Good, but uh, yeah. So oh, you know what else? What, what we were thinking? I just want to get this out of the way because I mean to do it for like ten podcasts. Yeah, but oh, we get great gifts. All that. This is the only thing. Real quick, someone gave me a bag of socks. About really? A couple months ago. Really nice socks. Really thoughtful, too. Like, you know how I like socks? Sure. You're a sock connoisseur, I, I would a, say. I, I am. Yeah. I, I probably have like, eh, like maybe like 150 pairs of socks. Yeah. Uh, and they gave me, she gave me like. But individuals. So we're not talking about packs of like six black socks. You buy individual, individual pairs. Individual yeah, socks. Yeah, pairs of yeah. socks. Right. She gave me like eight pairs of socks. Yeah. And they were all expensive, nice socks. And I, I was like, she's like, I was like, I was going to thank you on the air because it's so nice of you. And uh, I've always forgotten. So I just wanted to say that. Like, I forgot her name. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But I have worn every sock so far. Okay. So just thanks for that. Right. I, I had to get that because every time we like d- finish a podcast midweek, I remember it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. Um, I went to see Brett Michaels last night. Yeah. At, Without uh, poison. 
without poison. And I heard the the opening band was White Snake Dude, cover band. It was so fucking awesome. But they were a cover band. They were a cover band. So he got a White Snake cover band to open for him. Well, that was yeah, but you, yeah, they were so good though, dude. Really, they were they they were phenomenal. White Snake, here I go again on my own. Yes, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was. What else did they sing? White Snake. They do a bunch. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the one that I wanted Once to hear. Once twice shy, maybe. Is that no? I don't think that's them. Okay. I don't think they did that. But but the songs that they played, I knew, but I couldn't name what right, they were. Right, right. So we we had walked into the bar and and. I had gone with uh, our friend Stacy, my assistant Stacy, um, and uh, which is interesting because she doesn't have a boyfriend. So like these <laughs> these um, trips to see bands that she like, I would never go see Brett Michaels on my own. Oh, and she needs you as a, she right. Needs so to go. I go. So that well, hence I've seen Maroon Five about right, right, fucking right. ten times. She texts me to go. I just yeah. ignore him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, I don't know. I, a lot of times I'll come with you, right. but I got the the Brett Michaels text. But I need uh, I need Ricky Rocket, uh, Bobby Dole, and CC Deville with him. I don't know that you do. Let Did me he tell sing you all the all the classics? Well, well, you know, last week I went to go. Tell see me, he sang Poison songs with different people as backing him as a band. He did. Or was it acoustic? Almost all, all. No, no, he did almost all Poison songs without Poison. Yeah. And he, it was fucking great. And I saw some, remember I saw Sebastian Bach last week. Oh, yeah. And I like him. And I've seen him before and I've loved his shows, but I was somewhat disappointed by him. Right. Uh, I watched Brett Michaels and I might, my, my, like, what say you about Brett Michaels? Because I has always, have always seen him, you know, he was in Poison and we grew up, of course, during that era. Um, but my first concert ever was Poison. Poison with the uh, Tesla open for them. It was at Nassau Coliseum, February fourteenth, nineteen eighty nine. See, that's depressing because we drove past Nassau Coliseum to get to the bar that he was playing in, and I was like, "Oh, it was a man. bar." It was a bar music venue, but How, what's capacity? If I had to guess, I would say a thousand, maybe a little nah, more. It's not bad. No, no, no. Was it a one off? Well, Stacey even asked me. She goes, "Is this embarrassing for him?" And I said, "Absolutely not." I go, nah, he's making bank. Oh, yeah. I said, absolutely not. It's not, but I mean, it's not Nassau, Nassau Coliseum. Yeah, but Poison tours in the, in the summer and right. they do 15,000. Exactly. Person I, I said, I said, and, and he, so my, my opinion of Brett Michaels has always been maybe cheesy, like all the rock of love stuff and all that reality show stuff. This was before I was on TV. Now I get it. Like now I get, hey, man, if I do this show, I'm going to see all. Right. Revenues increase. Yeah, you get, you it's re- a business. Irrelevant. Yes, you're relevant. Yeah. Um, so I was a little unkind to Brett Michaels back when he started doing that stuff. I was like, all right, he's just a cheese ball. You know, everybody's like, is he bald? Um, all that stuff. Then he had the aneurysm and everybody started liking him a little bit more again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Maybe I should have an aneurysm. Was it? Maybe I should have an aneurysm. No, everybody loves you already. Oh, okay. So uh, anyway, this is the point. This guy, 51 years old, in better shape than you and I, well, better shape than I was when I graduated the fire academy, and I was fucking. Is that right? He is. He's. He's. I don't want to sound. You know. Yeah. He's. He's. He's, he's got a. He's, he looks. He looks like toned. He's fucking. He's yeah. It takes a lot to run around a stage and sing for two hours, dude. He you have to keep yourself. The show that he put on, I was blown away. Is the only word. What? What? Blown away is the what only word. What I don't get is how is he banking? How is he? I mean, he might own the rights to the songs. He probably wrote the songs. Right. So that's – but I guess he's just making extra bu- – like how do you – And the band was good. But how do you tell the other guys like, yeah, I'm going to do po- all the Poison songs without you? I don't know. Like when he's like, hit it, CC. Maybe they don't <laughs> get – he changed that? it. He changed it to the, uh, the, other, to guy the, to the guy, other guy's name. Um, but this guy was if – you, if you got a chance to see him, take it. Yeah, I saw him not too long ago. I, I used to see because I used to see Poison every summer now. Right, right. it's an annual thing at the at PNC. PNC yeah, right. yeah, so I saw him. I've seen him like th- three or four times in the last ten years. No, like Sebastian Bach played songs I didn't know. He played, you know, his. Was like, he just doing hit after hit? Hit after hit after hit. Every song was a Shit. hit. It was, dude. It was phenomenal. It was crazy. Yeah, and and I, I looked at him and I actually learned things. About being on stage, that I was like, wow! I was like, I was like, he the way he interacts with the audience is like, I was like, I, it's hard to explain, uh-huh. but like, I was like, the guy fucking, he's a performer. Like, the, oh, he's been doing it thirty, thirty. Oh, he, he nailed it, man! He nailed it. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because the staff of the place, 
uh, Mulcahy's, huge fans of our show. Okay. And they were like, they're like, so apparently he does a meet and greet. That's like 200 bucks to, to meet him. Right. And they're like, do you want to do you want to meet him? Do you, do you want to meet Brett Michaels? Oh, girls still pay that much to meet. Yeah, that absolutely. Yeah. And, and watching that show, I could see why. And and I was like, ah, I don't really want. I don't want somebody going in there being like, hey, one of the guys from Practical Jokers, and him being like, what, what's in Practical Jokers? And right, they're like, sure. so I was like, no. But Stacy was like, I've, I never ask you for fucking. Right. right. <laughs> she was like, like, oh, did you meet him? Get there. Get to the bus. Now there's a line oh, you him, of you women. You got on the bus? There's, there's a, that's where the meet and greet's held on, on his tour bus. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and there's a line of women. Yeah. The meet and greet's on the bus. That's, yeah. I think, I think it's called like the Brett Michaels tour bus experience or something like that. That's how you get it. Oh, well, sure. That's, what, 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 it costs him nothing to meet them on the bus. Right. But for the person buying the ticket, it's like meet him on his exactly. own tour bus. That's right. It, it's something completely mentally different. That's right. It's like, Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's that propaganda, the tour bus experience, right? Which is meet him on the bus, on the bus, right? Yeah. Meet him in a rolling hotel room. Right. So, so we get there, and his his bodyguards at the bus, huge fans of the show. They're asking for pictures. They're taking pictures with me. the The manager of the club goes, "I'll be right back. Let me just go talk to him." He comes back. He's like, "No." He goes, "No." <laughs> Wait, what? He goes, he goes, ah, he's not really feeling it. He's like, he's not, he's not really, he's not really feeling it. I was like, oh, oh. I was like, feeling oh. what? I don't know. I, I don't know. You mean he had, he had finished his meet and greet? I, I don't know. There were a line of women up to the bus. So I don't think so, but I don't know. They could just be waiting there for him to, to pop out. To pop out. So he finished the meet and greet. And I was like, and I was like, I, you know, I didn't, ca- I, the only reason I cared was because, well, would, I wonder how it was presented to him. Here's the thing. I don't think it was presented to him because I was like, I said, listen, I said, no problem. Don't worry about it. I said, I don't care at all. And even like the security guys were like, wow, what the, why the fuck wouldn't he say it? I was like, guys, I was like defending Brett Michaels. I was like, nah, he probably never saw the show. I was like, it's nothing like that. Nothing like that. And then the manager goes, you know what? He goes, L- let me talk to someone else. He goes, so I think that he didn't tell Brett Michaels. He probably told his manager or, the bus driver and oh, stuff right, like that. Oh, right, because it stopped, the buck stops at Brett Michaels. The buck stops. So if Brett Michaels said no, who else is he going to go talk to? Right. Who's he going to talk to? Right. And then say, tell exactly. Brett he has to do this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he probably asked someone else. And then they said no, yeah. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, if he doesn't know this, sh- like, it's all the way it's presented to it, too. Like, it's his fucking concert. You know, like, I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? If oh, the guy I'm not was like, saying the guy, no, anything no, 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 I'm him, saying right, yeah. the guy, if the guy was like, said to him, like, oh, I got a guy out there. He's, he's, he has a hit show on TV. He wants to come see it. It might be like, I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. Who, who knows? You know, like, instead of like, oh, I have a guy who's a huge fan of yours. Right. We all know him because we're fans of his. Would you mind? Right, right, right. It's a little different way to say it. To present yeah. It. I don't know how it was presented. But, uh, uh, that's, that's fun. But, you know, like, sometimes when, when we do two shows, and have two meet and greets, and so one in the morning we've been at the venue for eight hours. Right. Like by the time we we talk to every person just the same and spend the just amount the same with everyone. Person. Sure. And I actually am even outwardly thankful to the last people in line because they've waited, they waited that, that time. entire time. And even when then we leave, and there's people fans outside, we right. stay with all of them. Yeah. Uh, and I always say because they waited through two shows and two meet and greets. Some of them wait outside five five hours, like, right? Whatever. So, but you, but you know, like sometimes when you have nothing left, yeah, no gas. Yeah, so who knows? Um, You're saying he was running all over the place. Yeah, I oh, again, like, but it was, it was, so, it wasn't embarrassing. Was it general admission. Yes. So where did you watch the show from? I watched the show. We, I got, I got up. hit a lot, so I was like sort of hiding by the back. Okay. Stacy jetted up to the front. I, I really watched a lot of the show by myself. But, right. But it was cool. Actually, I met. You know what? You know how sometimes you're in the mood to talk to strangers, and sometimes you're not. Sure. And I'm not complaining. I, yeah, I mean, in regular life. Right. Not because not uh, we're on TV. Like, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. There was, I was really in the mood to talk to him. Like, so I ended up hanging out with a lot of our fans. Oh, that's cool. And they were, they were like, I just met so many nice people. That's great. And like, I was, I probably did about eight shots of Jameson during the show. Like, people just kept coming up and shit like right. that. And I, you know, sometimes you're in the shot mood to do shots. Right. I was in the mood to do shots. Right. People were buying me shots. I bought them yeah. drinks. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it was, yeah, it was, dude. Great. So I had a good time despite the fact that, that, you know, my friend was all the way up there. But, um, it was, it, it was a great show. Um, so how about we try to get Brett Michaels on? On what say you? Oh, hell yeah. Follow him on Twitter. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Is he on Twitter? He's we'll, on we'll Twitter. Do, we'll do that. We'll do we're, that. So we're gonna follow him on Twitter. Yeah. If uh, our, our, our faithful listeners want to do uh, as they've done so successfully in the past and reach out to him uh, yeah. respectfully, uh, let's try and get let's try and get him on. Well, I never even thought of that, but like I tell you, that was my favorite band from like sixth grade to like freshman year. You high school. still have a poison, like a, like the, one of the original poison shirts, right? That you bought at a concert. That, my first concert, I have yeah. the shirt. I'll get, I'll send it to Declan. Yeah, to put up. I have it. I have. I've seen them in concert ten times. Right. I have all their albums. Yeah, uh, I still own that shirt from '89. Right. Uh, I mean, come down on, on me all you want. Because I mean, but back then that that hairband stuff. Was, well, if was they're gonna come down on you for like poison. I mean, just go I, fuck yourself. I still still love what. Just go fuck yourself. I mean, go fuck yourself. What do you want? What do you, what do you listen to? Yeah. What do you What do you listen Why to? Why do so you feel like you're great. better than anybody else? Fucking pricks. <laughs> a bunch of assholes. <laughs> I uh, I love I love poison. Uh, I like Brett Michaels. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that would be. It never crossed my mind that to even make contact with him. But I would have some interview lined up for that guy. Yeah. 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 yeah it would be. He's, he's really. He's big though. I don't know. If I, he's big, but who you never fucking know? Yeah. If he's in New York. Uh, that'd be awesome. Let's do that. Cause we, yeah, yeah we, 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 we actually fell off. We, ha- we haven't been following someone every single podcast. No, we have. So well, I, I welcome that. The show is evolving. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and, uh, I'm also a piece of S because I, I got to get Tori Wells on that. Yeah. And I will send that message today to her today to get her on. Yeah. She's you know, in Vegas. She's in Vegas. And well, you know, Stan Hope told me why he's flying to LA just to do podcasts with, um, a bunch of comedians. I don't know if he wants me to say. You would know every one of their names. Uh, sure, I'm sure I could name them. You, you could. He and he's going to LA just to do podcasts with them. To to bank them. To bank them. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna hang out with Stan Hope too. He's gonna be here. Yeah, yeah. Stern. So yeah, yeah, I gotta mark that, that down. But uh, we're gonna be in Vegas. I we think are. Our, our our tour ends there. So, I mean, literally, we can set it up. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we would love to have her on. So, um. I don't know. What do we got? Well, I was, I, we were talking before the mics went on, just about like general issues that we, we we both have right now, just like just annoying things and stuff, right. like problems. Not to be warning bitches, right? Not nothing to even do with completely with, commonplace, issues. commonplace stuff. Right. There's everything and, and anything in between. And I and I had said to you, you know, it's important to remember that. Is always it's always something. Always something. You can't have a mindset that even my to do list. Right. The to do list is eternal. Yes. I'm never going to cross anything off and have that Zen moment where I'm like, I have to do nothing. Right. It's revolving. Yes. As is with, and this is not. This is not. I'm not. This is again. I'll go back to being trite, but like this isn't anything that anyone doesn't know. But it's 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 always something. Right. And I said. Is there a guy – it is 7 billion people on earth. Right. A percentage of those people, no matter how big or small it is, there's got to be people who have achieved that is not always something. <sighs> I know. You said that and the thought – you know how like – that I've never thought that before. Like it's a completely – No, we're not trained to think it foreign. nor is it realistic. Right. What's realistic is to make sure that you realize that every day – Right. You're just going to be problem solving. Not 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 all of your day, but right. like you're never going to. If it's not one thing, it's in the next thing, and this and that. And it's not about it's not about getting past those things. It's about living within those things. That's right. what that's what it is. Right. Now, and I don't mean about living living within like issues and pressure. And I'm just saying that element will be there along with all the other good shit. Right. So it's it's not about crossing everything off the to do list. It's about managing the to do list mm-hmm. and living life while you're managing it. That's that's everybody knows that, and if you don't, you should. But it blew my mind to think, no, there, no, there's people out there that have no, not a care, not a care in a good way, right? In a good way, not that they are so aloof that they, you know, I mean, in a good way, like a guy that's like, oh, what's bothering you, and the guy is just like, no, nothing. Nothing. No, nothing. No, no, no. So what's been, what's been going on? How you doing? Great. Uh, all right. How's, how's everything with uh, the family? Great. How's everything with the job? Great. You happy with your salary? Yeah. You happy with where you are? Yeah. You have a, pl- a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a one-month plan? Yep. <laughs> you happy with where you live? Yeah. Is the house a mess today? Nope. <laughs> How are your kids? Great. 
Everybody's healthy? Yeah. How they doing in school? Great. Or even if it's not, oh, yeah, they're doing all right, but they'll, they'll, they'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. Got car <laughs> trouble? No. All right. You thinking of uh, anything from your past that might be, keep resurfacing yeah. that depresses you? Nope. Stock, how you stocks in the stock market? Doing pretty good. Up. Some up, some down, what have you. Right. right. I'm not saying that every, this guy is fortunate enough that everything's going his way. Right. Which is actually how I might have been painting it. I'm saying he doesn't have a care in the world. Perspective. His perspective is such He's that- He's so zen. Right. That it's like, eh, I'm fine. If you have anything, anything at all, if you had to complain, even just anything, if you had to, if you had to, gun at your head, you had to. Ah, I got to tell you, nothing really comes to mind. Right. I don't know. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> How do you, do you get to the gym? Does yeah, that person yeah, yeah. exist? What? Does that person exist? Or? Seven billion people? You think he's like a monk on a, on like a, like a, a mountaintop somewhere? Just- I don't know if it has to be the, to that point of spirituality where you live a minimalist lifestyle where you wake up and pray and breathe and enjoy nature and zone everything out and you're that present. You know, you, you hear all the teachings of Buddhism and of Eckhart Tolle and all that stuff about being present. I, I don't think you need to be a Bo- – uh, like I don't think you need to be a monk to achieve that. But that guy – I want to meet the guy who is – lives in like let's say New York <laughs> or lives – I, I want to meet the guy who like lives a, like what would be deemed – a, like a somewhat normal lifestyle, right? And is in that headspace. Even people that it's not that he's not getting stressed; it's just that he is able to just deal with stress, so that he's not stressed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I I know he's not in this room. That's <laughs> that's that's the only no. thing I know. Well, maybe it's just not like it's not like no everything's fine at work. Maybe it's just like no, you know, I, I want to. I, I, I'm waiting on that race. But if you know, if I don't get it, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, you know, I'll, I have some options. Maybe I'm, I'll go to this other place. Right. So maybe it's not like that. It's not that nothing's going wrong with him. But I don't know. Maybe it's his optimism. But to the yeah. point of like, but but even like being optimistic to a unrealistic point isn't that a detriment? I mean, not that you have to be a pessimist, but a realist. Like, you can't let everything roll off your back, can you? Like, that's almost like you're numb. I don't, I don't, but what you're. Like, you have a fight with the wife? Yeah, we'll, we'll get over it. Right. You know, your kid's failing? Yeah, but you're going to go to summer school. But even in, like, and the, this is, this is what the, the Buddhists say is, you know, it's all about living in the moment. Don't, right. past is the past. Right. The future is never certain. Even your own mind is, is, they describe it like a flea jumping on a dog. It's all over the place. Right. Live in the moment, live in the moment. So when he's having his, that fight with his wife, he's not, you know what I mean? He's having a fight with his wife. So it's a, it's a, it's an issue, you know? Like if you look at it like that, he doesn't have it all together in that one moment. Right. He's fighting with his wife. Yeah, but there's, but then after that, he's not fighting with her. I know. I'm just trying to bring this prick down. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I, I don't like that he's out there. Oh, fuck. It's something else I want to talk about, but okay. Um, yeah, he's he's that. I mean, or she. I don't mean one of these people that are like medicated or like just like dull. Right. I mean someone who's very aware and very present. I think it's a sociopath. I think you'd have to be a sociopath, really, because how are you not? I have people in my life that I love, and I'm cons- constantly worried about them. Like I, not in like an overarching way, but I think about my brothers and I. You know, yeah, I worry about them. I'm always worried about my sister. Sure, and like my nieces, you know, my nephew is handicapped. I worry, I worry about him. I worry about his his quality of life. Like I, I have these thoughts where I worry about him, and I'm like, you know, it's like that is the stress that you're talking about, right? Like, yeah, I mean, well, anything. It just so how do you not have it, that? It comes. It's going to come at you inevitably. Right. Uh, 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 it's going to come at you from every angle all the time. Mm-hmm. I guess, what is he doing? Well, we've made him up, so who knows? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, who yeah, even yeah. knows if he's out there? But it's, I think it's a little bit of a, of a sociopathic tendency to not worry about other people and other things. Well, I think there's a fine line about what we're talking about. Not worrying doesn't, I don't mean that. I don't mean like, oh, I don't worry about my children. I think, like, he worries, but right. he processes it in a way that, dilutes stress like right. it just it's just like nah everything's gonna be okay like it'll all work out but in. like not unrealistically either just like well because at the end of the day like most things are 
But you okay, can tell right? yourself that. Right. But whether you're your biological, internal, like whether you're really going to believe that right. is another thing. Like people tell themselves things and tell other people things to comfort them and make themselves feel better. Yeah. But sometimes it's just covering something. Yeah. But it's another thing to say that and then believe it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I've never gotten the hang of it. Ah, well, There's I'm a trying. great line in a Tom Petty song. It's fucking brilliant. And it goes, most things that I worry about never happen anyway. And I, every time I hear that song, I think about that line and I'm, it's a hundred percent right. Yeah. Well, they say stress is, um, is man-made. Right. They, they say that now in our natural state, stress doesn't exist. Like it's, that it's, can't it's be right. completely put on. But how? How? What, what about basic hunter gather survival shit? Like, I need to eat and there's no food. Well, they also say something like stress or sadness uh, has like a like an internal biological shit like expiration. Really? And it's in human reaction. Like even sadness or mourning, they say lasts X amount of time. They defined it. I don't remember what it was. And then after that, it's you start re re bring really? it back on yourself. I wonder I I've I've had this thought that sort of plays off that where everything has an evolutionary reason, right? right. Everything. Your fingers, the reason why some people lose hair, some people keep hair. Right. You you know, everything, everything. It's all conditioned. Fear, sadness, it's all like conditioning of evolution. And I also wonder of like I'm pretty sure I've discussed this with you in the past, but I I definitely don't think we've done it on the podcast where it's like I've struggled with depression for a large portion of my life. Right. And I'm like, what is the evolutionary reason for depression? Like, mm-hmm. I wonder what it is. And the only thing that I, and I'm fucking, I don't know anything, but I'm just like, certain people don't have that. Certain people excel under certain situations or, or certain people don't wake up in the morning and just feel depressed. And I'm just like, maybe it's there to weed out the weak from the strong, or maybe it's there to create weak. So they could be strong or, you know, or, or maybe, maybe it's a defect in, in me and people like me, like that if we were in the wild and like, there's no way I would be an alpha male because I'd be like, hmm, I'm not good enough and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Right. And there are some people who walk around being like, I am good enough. I'm the fucking leader. And you know right. what I mean? And so maybe it just is, just, again, all in my head, it's just a theory I came up with that the just depression is a way of sorting out the cream for the crop. And like, when I thought about that, I was just like, depressed. yeah, I was like, well, well, hold on one second. I was like, by my own theory, like I'm genetically evolved to be a loser. Like, <laughs> nah, yeah, but that's not, that's not true because along the way, there's so many variables. Of course. <laughs> of course. You gotta go all the way back. Like, you have to admit though, it's a sound theory. Yeah, I mean, because because if you go all the way back, if you're talking about conditioning, right. go back to then before there was a need for an alpha or a leader and a follower or a depressed or a not. Right. Like, where was that born? What was that born from? Like, why? I don't know. I, I got now we're, we're we're above my pay grade on that one, but I. But was there ever not a need for an alpha male? Did we just just this is just a disclaimer? We, neither of us have smoked weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true because I, I was about to say like you know what blows my mind sometimes <laughs> and i'm like like and i realized like it sounds like we just had like like fucking weed, weed brownies <laughs> um it blows my mind that every every single thing that's that is man-made there was a first one right i, I know it's right. stupid no it's but you're right it doesn't and Every one of those at one point in time somewhere was invented. Right. Not sure under what circumstance, how or why, but it was invented born of a need. Right. In a way. Right. right? That's what you're just saying. Like fucking anything. Right. Like I'm looking around my kitchen. There was a first picture frame. There was a first table. Right. There was a first carpet. There was a first pillow. There was a first like fucking bo- like glass. Bottom. Right. Was, right. A first everything. There was one dude. Right. Well, one lady <laughs> who literally was like, I'm going to fashion this into a pillow right. for my head. Right. X amount. And then 
that had to be seen by another person. Well, no, I tell you what though, that could have been happening simultaneously. I, almost definitely, almost definitely, yeah, almost yeah. definitely. But because of a need, sure. But then some things maybe not because of a need. Like, is there really a need for a picture frame? Right. Like, I don't know if if if, if picture frames happened simultaneously at different points of the earth. I bet you there was. Like a, ornate, a, I guess. Like protection, I bet it was, or something. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. I bet there was. But anything and everything. Yeah. Anything and everything. Right. Like a fucking placemat. Like anything and everything. Like I want to go I, – I wish I could choose something and just be tunneled right back to that moment where someone was like, oh, a placemat. You know, like – or even like pr- more, way more primitive than that. Right. You know what I mean? Just that like – I don't know. Like that always blows my mind. Right. Because like you don't think about it. Like whenever I fi- finally fucking stop and think that the universe is infinite, I know I've known that since I'm since I since I'm five years old. You right. see that in a car too. You, you just know it. You just know we it. know it. We walk around with that information. When I take the time every like once every like year to stop and think about it, yeah. Not only do I blow my own blow my mind again, <laughs> but like it scares me and I stop. Right. It scares me and I stop. It's pretty fucked up. What's going on out there? Right. There's just. What, what, well, they, what do they say? Sh- it ends? Like it ends? Like matter ends somewhere? Right. And it's a black of hole, a vacuum of non-existent matter, right. which basically doesn't make doesn't make, doesn't make computing sense to me. No. Like we should just have the fucking weed right now. We so should, we well, continue we continue the conversation. You and I had a similar conversation. We were driving once, and we on one of our our, our tour trips. Uh, which, by the way, we're going to be in New Orleans. Uh, yes. This month. And Nashville this month. Yes. Two big, big shows. Big shows. We, we, yes. We're, we're going to be at Foxwoods this weekend, but that's sold out. Right. But we got tickets available in Nashville. We're doing the Wild West Comedy Festival. We're playing the Ryman Theater, right. which is apparently the be end all. The, the drummer for the, for the Black Crows, Steve Gorman. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, he, I, I told him we we're playing there, and he was like, it's the best. The best venue in the United States. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, we were so lucky to be asked to do this. Yeah. And uh, we'll be there on – we'll be there Thursday through Sunday floating around the festival. But right. our show, I believe, is Friday. That's right. May 16th. Yeah, I think that's it. It's on our website, thetendalloys.com. New Orleans is going to be a fun show. New too. Orleans is the big one even more to announce because New Orleans was just announced. Yeah. And New, Orleans, New Orleans is coming up quick. Yeah. And it's the last – Friday. Friday. So we did the Friday. In May. In May. And it's at the Sanger Theater, which I think is a gorgeous, beautiful theater yeah. there. Uh, and tickets are available for that one. They just announced it. So you can still actually really get really good seats. Right. Uh, but uh, it's a big, big space and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. We're going to have some friends there. Maybe, you and I are drinking on stage that night. Maybe a sure. couple it's surprises. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you and I were driving on the road and and we we had a conversation that basically was like the most advanced civilization that has ever existed. Fucking forget about iPhone. Like just just everything that science fiction tells us is coming. Spaceships, teleportation, fucking all that stuff, everything. The most advanced civilization ever exists. Could have died out. Could have died out 5 billion years ago. Right. Like it could, it could have come, reigned for two billion years, and then died. And now we're just starting over. And we're just, we're just here starting over. Right. It's that's crazy. And let me tell you something. I read this book uh, that Eric Liederman gave me, actually called Ishmael, that tells you that that like talks about stuff like this. And they had such an interesting point where where they said, all right, if you were to talk to a jellyfish like millions of years ago, floating in the ocean, and the jellyfish could talk, it would say. Hey man, like the world turned out pretty good. Like I, you know, I'm a jellyfish. I'm in an ocean. Everything evolved as it should, and this is pretty fucking amazing. Like, thank God the world worked out for me. But what that jellyfish doesn't realize, it's just a step in the evolutionary chain. So if we ask humans now, and we're like, yeah, we're fucking at the forefront of technology. Like this is it. We're the best. But if if you look at us in the same context of that jellyfish. We're, we're a step. We're still just a step for what's going to come next. And a million years from now, we're going to be as de-evolved as that jellyfish was. As de-evolved as the jellyfish. Isn't that insane? What the fuck? What right. the fuck? We'll be as de-evolved as the jellyfish. As the jellyfish. Speaking of which, if you want to go see Devo. Right. All right. Uh, <laughs> June, <laughs> June, June 19th, because the Devo is short for de-evolution. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, they're playing at uh, at the Best Buy Theater in June. I can't get anyone to go with me. I'll go with you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're off, I'm off, so I'll go. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. That's pretty insane. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. If if we're not impl- if if we're not done by then, who knows? Yeah. This is this has been two things. This podcast. Okay. The most unfunny podcast yeah. ever, which is fine. We can get those yeah. out. But we are two comedians, so like, right. if someone comes to listen to this one for the first time. Right, right. But we're really, before that, we're two, we're friends. So right. this is a, it also has been like two college kids. <laughs> we should, it put, uh, we should put something in this episode to smoke weed before you listen to it. Right. That's what we should do. Right. I didn't even get to talk about the Rocky play. I went to go see the Rocky. Oh my God. We have to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. All right, we'll we take okay? five more minutes. Yeah, we'll take five more Where minutes. I'm running really late. We're at 55 uh, minutes, but that's all right. All right. Let's, let's take five minutes to talk about the Rocky. Okay. Um, First of all, go ahead. immediately I'm like – immediately upon hearing that there's a Rocky play, two things. Yeah. I have to see it. Yes. And it's it's got to be horrible. That's what I would think. Right. But in a, horrible in a good way. Okay. That's what I would immediately think. Yeah. Uh, and that's great because I don't care. Those expectations mean nothing. If it's worse than I thought, that's great. If it's better than I thought, that's great. Sure. Win-win. It's rocky. It's rocky. And because uh, a, a lot of times people get – like when they make a play out of something like Rocky, like yeah. it, it gets put down. Like it's not real art. Sure. But, uh, but Rocky is – Amazing. It's – it's the story of Rocky. It's one of the best films ever made. It's, sure. it's phenomenal. It's an Academy Award winner for yes. best It's a, it's no lightweight. No, it's a great movie. So uh, I'm so interested because I had heard, you know, we had heard feedback from friends. Yeah, Jay Miller. Jay Miller kind of uh, is it? Is it a? Is it's not. It's really enjoyable. I could not believe. How into it I got. I think we're getting into plays. and man, you Definitely, know. dude. Definitely. I, I used to go to like one Broadway play a year. Yeah. This year alone, I've gone to like seven. Yeah. 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 Me too. I just went, I went to Wicked with my mom. Right. I took my nieces to see Mama Mia. Right. I saw Book of Mormon twice. Right. You, uh, I saw Wicked this year. Book of Mormon <laughs> twice. Cabaret, which was the fucking worst thing I've ever seen. Uh, Rocky and Let the Right One In. Yeah. It's May. I've seen six Broadway <laughs> plays already. So you're telling me. Because Jay's take was it was the worst thing he's ever seen until the end. Then it was the best thing he ever saw. I I feel that he he, he sees plays too. He, he sees plays, musicals he, and plays. I I feel that Jay and I have disagreed. And Jay Miller is a writer on Impractical Jokers and a friend of ours. Um, he and I have disagreed on things in the past. So uh, we 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 vary sure. in big ways. He hated Gravity, the movie Gravity. I didn't see it yet. I liked it. Right. Um. I saw an IMAX 3D. He didn't. So, that, you know what I mean? There might right. be something's going on. But uh, he couldn't stand it. Anyway, um, so he really was like, it's not, you know, he's exactly what you just said. The guy who plays, first of all, it's it's the story of Rocky with, with songs thrown in it, which is a little weird. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you, like, is it Broadway Rocky? Or do they get it's, grit in there? It's surprisingly not. The the set is the first of all, it's the best set design I've ever seen on any show ever. What they managed to pull off, dude. What they managed to pull like- off is is <laughs> un- I know. I'm like, it's the set design's better than Wicked. <laughs> you 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 can't believe it. Like when when he goes to the meet, when he goes to meet, meet Paulie at the at the meet that Shamrock meets, they drop down on the stage thirteen full like carcasses yeah. and the audience went berserk it was that impressive wow. the, the gym everything's so great dude it was i've never seen anything like it the way the sets i don't i have an idea of how theater works we spend a lot of time on on stages i had no idea how they pulled off everything that they pulled off with all this stuff and how were the fights were fights they choreographed were dancing fucking great no it wasn't like west side story fighting it it was abbreviated like you know it was abbreviated and it was obviously fake right. but it was great the end fight is twenty minutes long end are you ready for this it's twenty minutes it's long it's a twenty minute long is, fight a, is it Apollo it's Apollo it's the story of, of Rocky it's, right. it's it's beat for beat the movie is he trying to talk like Stallone is he like yes is, but it's is not he, is it affected like he does his version of that he doesn't do Stallone's version of it but it is good it's set but he's not like. Adrian, you know a little bit, but not. He doesn't do an imitation of it. Right. He does a spin of it. All if right. that makes sense. Okay. It's set in the seventies, which is fu- it's set in seventy six. Yeah, Philly in seventy six. Yeah. So they're all the costumes of seventies and stuff like that. Um, the end. The end fight 
But I mean, the, the play's good. The songs are good. He, like, you know how you watch Rocky and you're like. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is what I'm asking. Not okay. to stop you. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. But like, it's Rocky. Yeah. So like, when he then starts to sing a song, is it like a fucking Rocky singing a ballad right now? No, because what they did is they tapped in to what made Rocky so lovable. Like, he's he's not singing. Like, he's singing about being a loser, about being afraid his feet, like it's just all these expressions of this. And I'm not saying the songs were the most memorable songs in the world, right. but I thought they did a good job of of getting across what we liked about Rocky. Okay. He sings to his turtles at one point. And the guy who plays Rocky is so fucking good. Yeah? But yeah, he's really did good. Did they show him training and running and everybody following him? The audience was going fucking bizarre. Because it's like, dan, da, da, dan, da, da, dan, da, 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 da. And they have the Philadelphia stairs uh, yeah. like come out. And the first time he runs up, remember in the movie, he couldn't make it the first time. He About halfway up, he holds the side. I guess people in the audience forgot that because when he starts going up the stairs, the fucking theater and went. He bizarre- make it. And then he didn't make it. <laughs> and then he didn't make it. And then he comes down. And then he, when he eats the eggs, I guess this poor motherfucker eats three raw eggs on stage every night. The audience goes. No, he doesn't. Dude, he cracks an egg and the audience starts clapping. He cr- cracks a second egg. The audience goes nuts. Third egg. The audience is going crazy. Oh, so the audience, you had a good audience. You, you, we're totally into it. He downs it. He, the fucking place goes berserk. They love it. Like the eggs are getting an applause. Oh, you know really? It? Yeah, it's great. Oh, that's good. And the training sequence was really well done. He puts a hood up so you can't tell it's him. And then basically 10 Rockies are training all around the stage and running oh, and stuff like that. Cool. It's really cool. The end fight. If you're sitting in the first five This rows, is Rocky one, so he loses. Uh, yeah, but by draw, he goes the distance. Oh, no, it's the two of them. Yeah, him and Apollo. Oh, no, he goes the distance, goes the in, distance. One. in two, they fall together, right? And he wins in two. He becomes right. a champion. Got it, got it, got it. So the end fight, first five five rows. Blood? Yeah. That's great. They cut him. They cut his eye and all the blood yeah. comes out. They say, anybody in the first five rows... When the big fight happens at the end. They announce this before the play starts? Yeah. You buy the specific tickets. You go up on stage. You go up You're, you're on kidding me right stage, now. stage. You're kidding me right and now. And they set bleaches up. It is a regulation-sized boxing ring. You're kidding me right I now. I am not kidding you. You're kidding me right I now. I am not kidding you. There's a fucking regulation. They stop down the play? They, go, they stop down they, the play. No, no. What they do is they the announcers come up, and as the announcers are talking, they go, and the audience is filling in to the to the uh, you know the uh, the Philadelphia Arena tonight, blah blah blah. And then the ushers come and get you, and they bring you up on stage, and and they they the a regulation size boxing ring. Bleaches come out from the sides, and you sit you sit on the bleaches on the stage, and the ring slides out over the audience. Over the five rows that were just vacated by by the people watching it. And then the bleachers move forward to fill in the spot that the ring was just in. You're fucking kidding me. Dude, it is fucking Is that what he phenomenal. meant by the la- The end was the best thing I've ever yes. seen in my life? And and then they invite everybody that's in the audience to stand up and come and stand around the box. No ring. fucking Dude, way. Dude, it's crazy. No it's way. It's crazy. And they tell you, act like you're at... A prize fight. When do they say this? They said it when, when they're sitting you there. When they give you, like, when you were sitting there, it's called the gold the gold circle seats. Yeah. When they sit you there, they're like, we're going to pull you up on stage. Act as if you're in a fight. Go crazy. They're like, do, cheer, boo, fucking go berserk. And that's what everybody did. So now. That is brilliant. Dude, we're all sitting there. And so we're did you fucking, have these seats? Yeah. Well, I bought them for that reason. Right. And and the guy. Oh, you knew this? Yeah, I knew this. I knew this. And Well, I knew you went to sit on stage. I didn't know that it was like How'd this. How did you find that out? I read a review. And okay. they, so, so, and then when they, when you get there, when they scan your ticket, they go, Oh, welcome to your Broadway debut. And I was like, Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. And then, dude, the guy next to me is punching me. We're going fucking berserk. Everybody's going, Rocky, Rocky. Oh, you got to be kidding. Dude, it's I had nuts. It's nice. It's nuts. Oh, it's so good. Did you, get, did you feel like, yes. you know when you, how you feel when you watch Rocky? Yeah. yeah. Is that how you felt? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I knew how it ended and it was the Broadway version of Rocky, so maybe a little less, but dude, yeah. I was right. I was in the pocket, man. Because that's what happens in the movie theater. When you right. when I saw Rocky 1 through 4, I didn't see 1 or 2. I saw 3 and 4 in the theater right. and so on. But I remember the first one I ever saw, my dad took me to was three. Okay. At the lane on New York. Lane. Sure, sure. And my dad's like, we're going to go see Rocky. And I was like, well, I didn't know what it was yet. Right. Because that was only like six or right. seven. Well, Rocky One came out in 76, right? When we were born. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, oh, you're going to love it. Don't worry about it. You're going to love it. You're going to see. It's going to be amazing. And he's like, he's a boxer. We're going to cheer for him. Right. And we get, we went in and the whole theater was like we were at the boxing. Crazy. Room. And I, that was the first time I ever seen anything like right. that. Like, my, my, like people were standing up 
in the seat, yeah. like whistling like this. I can't do it, but you know how they whistle yeah, like yeah, they yeah, two yeah. fingers in the, and they were like, get him, Rock, come on, yeah. Rock. And like people in the stands, like shadow boxing, like in the movie theater. <laughs> and I looked at my father, I was like, I, I was blown away. Yeah. Cause you know, you, I guess you really don't know per se after the first two if Rocky's gonna win. Right. It's not a layup that he's gonna win. Right. So people are really like yelling, like, get him, Rock, get him, Rock. Right, right. Plus, we're in Staten Island, he's Italian, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and my dad's whistling and everything, and I was like, <laughs> oh my God. That never lost that either. When I saw Rocky Balboa, yeah. like five years ago, yeah. it was still that. Yeah, it was yeah, still yeah. like, here he goes again. Yeah, that's, that's, that's gotta be unbelievable. What an dude. iconic thing. Yeah. So, dude, so now I'm on stage. Right. And I'm fucking cheering, and Apollo comes out, and I start booing him. And he comes from the back of the theater with the hat on and the, you know, with this Uncle Sam yeah, hat on yeah, yeah. and the sequin thing. And he's got five girls and they're playing the song and he's dancing his way up to the stage. It's fucking great. And did, did they play to you? Yes, because I started booing him when he came up. I'm going, boo! And he goes at me and he flicks at me with his glove. No. Yeah. And I, I was like, get him, Rocky! Get him! Like, it's fucking insane. Like everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing it. You don't feel it. out of place. No, no, not at all. In fact, I will say this. I started it on the stage because I was just like... Fuck it. Like, right. I, I, one, I was taking, like, there's a thing. Cause I'm sure there's, there's, depends where you, which wood audience you, you get. But yeah. if you get one where they're all just like looking on stage, it must yeah, suck. I wouldn't allow it to. I, I got up there and I, first thing I started doing was screaming and cheering. Yeah, yeah. And that, and it sort of rose the, the thing. It was, right. yeah, you would have been proud of me actually. But, and the reason I felt that is cause I had taken so many, I guess the Rocky Broadway audience is the Impractical Jokers audience. So I was taking a ton of pictures beforehand. Is, oh, is. Is. Okay. So when I was up on stage, like people were waving at me and stuff. So I was like, all right. right. I was like, now I'm on stage too. Right. You know what I mean? And so, so I, I got into it. But I don't think that if I didn't do it, it would have happened. I think it would have happened anyway because people in the audience were doing it. So like it, it's just, it's just crazy. And but did you, you know you don't have any of those guys? Like you remember when we went to many? Oh no, you weren't with me. Oh, I went to Medieval Times and I started giving the night shit. Yeah, and I would stand up, be like, boo, and the security kept coming over to me. No, no, they going. want you to do it. They right. specifically so, tell you. But I'm saying it. the guy next to you who's like there to see a Broadway play is not like he was right. Stop hooting and not all. at all, not right. at all. I mean, you're a rocket, you right. know what I mean? And it's a 20 minute fight. And it ends like the movie ends. You know what I mean? Do the horns really come in? Dude. The, like, like, yes. like blaring? Yeah. Because I, I think it needs to blare. They did Eye of the Tiger too. They, they sing did. Eye of the Tiger in it during, during one of the training sequences. But that was actually the one, the song I liked the least because it was Eye of the Tiger, but a Broadway version of Eye of the yeah. Tiger. So it's like, it is the Eye of the Tiger. Right. I was like, ah, I could have done without it, but I know they had to put it in. Right. But dude, I, I felt exhausted. When the show was over, I was like, <sighs> I was like, Phew. and then people, I heard people as I was leaving being like, that was really good. I was surprised how good. Nobody knows exactly what you said. I don't know what to make of yeah. this. And people were, as we were walking out, being like, I can't believe how good that was. That was, that was really good. So what, but what Jay said was everything. He said that, that was what he was alluding to. Yeah. That is the best thing he's ever seen. It's great. He said prior to that, it was horrible. It wasn't horrible. Emily said that the first act was a little slow for her liking. I didn't feel that way. I was in. I bought in. Yeah, because that's what it is. Like if you, you yeah. you're seeing Rocky, so yeah, you just yeah, want to like you're into it, right? And and the girl who played Adrian was adorable. So it's like it's like watching her was fun. The ice skating rink scene where he takes the skating yeah. was so good, dude. It was just so funny. Oh, so they hit all those things. They hit they hit all the major things. Holy. Right? And what about uh? What about Mickey? Mickey? Mickey was good. He was played by a different type guy. He was a big big guy, older, but he hit it. And that speech he goes when he comes to his house. Oh, they didn't do. It wasn't a little Classic Irish guy. Mickey? No, no. But this guy was great. I'm telling you, it was great. And the guy who played Paulie looked exactly like um, Christopher Lloyd. I, in fact, I looked up to see if he was Christopher Lloyd's son. He looked like Doc Brown. So it was they. They you know they they didn't go for exact sure. uh, things, but it all worked. But, but the guy who played Rocky looked like Stallone. He looked enough Doc like Stallone. Had, Doc, yeah, but he you know where Stallone had the bulk. Yeah, he was more of a. He probably would have been a middleweight. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, rather than than a heavyweight. <laughs> Oh, I want to see it, it so was bad good, dude. Now. It was good. And let me tell you something. The I was in the second row or third row. Top tier seats are like a hundred and like thirty dollars. Right. Yeah. How do you know you're getting those seats? You pick them. It's called the gold circle seats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then does the play end with you on stage? Yes. So they, you're looking they, at you're looking at the audience cheer for the play at the end. Yeah, like when, did they take their bows? They or? do. They do it in a circle. Like they rotate. First they do it to the to the to the bleachers and then the back and then they rotate around. So they're Oops. taking their bows with you on the stage. On the stage. Yeah. So you're looking. You, people get the view that we get when we go on stage yeah. every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That go on stage. Yes. They see the audience cl- climbing. Yes. Yeah. And then they, but then the curtain drops. There's no curtain. They, they the crowd goes off stage. 
And then the ushers come and they, they escort you down. And but where do the actors go? They go to the side. They go to the wings. And exit. And exit, yeah. They get and go to, and then you're still on stage. Yeah. The music stops, you're on stage. Yeah, yeah. And then you file it off the stage. That's right. Yeah. And so is it a traditional theater or is it like a different theater? No, it's Winter Garden Theater. Oh, it's the Winter Garden yeah, Theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And dude, it was fascinating to, to when I was up in the wings, I, I took time to look left and right, all the props that were lighted. It was really something, man. Yeah. It, it was exciting. It was great. Oh, you have no, I mean, I yeah. want to go immediately. I'll go again. If you want to go, I'll go. Shit. Like I, in my head just now, I was like, I wish I can just go. Like, like there's no, there's not tomorrow. I, I have yeah. work. I have we'll go after work. To work. We'll go after work. I have too much day. work, but like the, this is like something yeah. I want to get to. Every so, day. and I feel like, because I know you really well, I think you're going to fall on my end of it. Right. Rather than Jay Miller's. Right. I think. Well, the thing with me is like, I never liked musicals because I just zone out. Like, cause it's like, as soon as it, I'd rather a play. Right. Because as soon as I'm getting into something, it's like, they're going to fucking sing again. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, but not every fucking song is a great song. Right. And it, and it could drag it out, especially when nothing's out. Like when someone's like singing about their feelings and it's right. like just one person on stage looking into like a mirror. Yeah. Or something like that. And like, that's how it was like, like, like even with like my nieces, like they, they, they got the Mamma Mia DVD. Yeah. So they learned all the songs and they asked to go see Mamma Mia. Right. I, I told you my niece asked for on her Christmas list three tickets to Mamma <laughs> Mia, <laughs> which she told me it was one for her, one for her sister and one for the chaperone. <laughs> but, uh, so I took them to see that and I love that they knew all the songs, but I'm like, I don't give a fuck about this. Right. It was still like, there's something about live performance. It's still fun. Yeah, yeah. But like they were singing to, and again, it was ABBA songs and I knew some of them. So that was cool. Yeah. But like there were more moments in it where i was like eh, eh, you know right let's get to the next fucking scene of the next song <laughs> right. but like when we saw book of mormon i didn't it was like one of the only times i don't feel that way because i'm vested because i i know they're geniuses i'm such f- fans of trey park uh matt right. and trey park and I, like every word was funny and they nail every beat of that play so i'm in, into it the whole time right and that is what sparked me being like i, I want to see more plays that make me feel this way right, you know right. I mean? so I'm, I'm excited. I would see it. Yeah. We, this is, the, we sound like, <laughs> this is the weirdest fucking This episode. is the weirdest That's episode That's all right. Ever. Fuck it. Fuck it. Take the journey, people. Yeah. So, yeah, what so, we were saying before was uh, the the journey is, uh, the, 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 the life is a series of gherkins. Yeah. Pickle after pickle. That you pickle well, we, to, instead of pickle, we, we started calling it gherkin <laughs> like a long time ago. Um, I got to get out of here. Yeah. We were going an hour, 15 minutes. You want right. to make the phone call? See what we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, this is a this is definitely like for the for the uh I don't know if you're gonna be a Oh yeah, we, we gotta tell them to smoke weed before you Yeah, I'll put that I'll put that in the description. <laughs> no, we don't want them to smoke weed. We right? We just hey, if there's anything that you can do <laughs> to put you in the right mind frame to listen to Right, right. <laughs> there you go. I don't condone any of that. All right, I just need a In the States where it's legal to smoke weed, sure. We suggest you smoke That's weed. That's right. Right. Uh, any any kind of uh, uh, Philadelphia for Rocky okay mm-hmm. I don't know what it is I'll look that up right now made me want to go and watch Rocky again by the way uh, what was after after Russia was Rocky 5 and that was he didn't even step in the ring Tommy, Tommy, Tommy Gunn right? that was the dud right it was the dud yeah well actually I rewatched the entire Rocky series last year uh-huh. and they don't hold up. A lot of them don't hold up. The Russian one is like yeah, almost it's, unwatchable. It's 80s, ter- it's yeah. 80s tastic, right? Yeah. And it's like corny and everything. It's just, it's, it's montage after montage yep. after montage. Yeah. I, we were dying. Well, uh, but then after Rocky came Rocky, 215. After Rocky came Rocky Balboa. Which is great. Which was him coming out of retirement. Yeah, for an exhibition and, match. And didn't they um then make the fights more realistic finally? That was the first one. Yeah. Like if you it, it if was, you watch one and two and three, not, it there's zero defense. It's not like real boxing. Right, right. It's it's actually a joke. It, right. It, it's it's just they each take five hundred headshots. Right. It's something nobody could do. And there's not no defense. And also you even see them punching and missing. Right, right. Uh it will look pretty good the fights in the, in yeah. the last one. All right. Great end to the series. All right, here we go. All right. Calling Philadelphia. Once again, I'm hoping for a hang up so I can get the hell out of here. Calling Philly to see if we can interview a stranger. Did you fuck a number? I did. Okay. We are sorry. 
sorry. All circuits are busy now. Please try your call again. Later. That's it for this episode of What Say You? I'm Brian Quinn. I'm Sal Volcano. And we'll see you next week. Then how come everyone is rushing to get ahead? And if I seem to be reserved, that's just my way. Your questions seem like you're interrogating me. Yeah, I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a D next time. Uh huh, uh huh. I heard the lemon metaphor four million times And I don't stand for lemonade, don't ask me why And would a beverage stand be a job that be desired? And where would I get the wood and should I try? Should I try? Then again I don't try I get an F for effort I get a 65 yeah, I try, yeah, 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 then again I don't try I get an F for effort I might as well just Uh-huh, uh-huh The currency don't grow like leaves on trees Then how come my money comes and goes so seasonally And I wish farmers planted plants instead of thieves My friend pays a ton of green for greener groceries Yeah, she tries Then again, she don't try She gets an F for effort She'll plant a tree next time Yeah, she tries then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a D next time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a 65. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try. Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I might as well just die. Next message. Okay, see. Listen now, Fia. Please call me w what you say. Not have hit. End of message.